what's happening what's happening uh so yeah like i had said i was gonna be off this week um kind of got the garage cleaned up cleaned out plenty of space well uh my son and the dogs are kind of taking over i guess i can let my dogs kind of just hang in here hopefully they'll just hang in here come on go lay down girls go lay down go on lay down yeah just kind of dial it in there okay mags be a good girl okay you too bella so yeah anyway so we'll chill out here um kind of got the tv going uh for owen if he wants to kind of watch it um he's kind of scared every time i get close to this thing it makes like really loud noises and that's usually when i start it and it like scares the shit out of him so so i'm gonna kind of lay off of that um at least until he's got some little earmuffs that he can rock um so up here you guys can see my diffuser i don't have it on right now it goes underneath this rear bumper um let me see if i can get uh, the sun's kind of maggie get back in there maggie inside um so yeah you know you pull the bumper off and then the bumper kind of goes over top i have had it on there um i did pre-drill the holes like you can see look at all that orange peel so i don't know how many of you follow my instagram but uh i'm gonna try and get this as flat as i can i'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it but like little shit like i'm sure you can see that a little bit of free a little bit of extra free paint uh that got put on there um this quarter is per, this quarter is real bad um let's see let's see if i can find the right uh, that should probably do it look at that it looks like somebody just like sneezed on it and had like a had like a mouth or nose full of sand or something so here's some here's some more free paint So, so yeah, just that kind of shit. Um, this thing I do have to take back apart. Um, and I did, I did say it in an earlier video. You can see I kind of put this thing together and it's solid, but, uh, every one of these gets a washer. And, uh, when you don't read the directions and you just kind of slap something together, uh, that's the kind of little minor minor detail you miss out on you know all these don't and i think i found that out because one of these bottom ones like pulled out you know it pulled like straight through the hole um and this is just just some like real thin fiberglass so oh well and, you know this thing isn't going to make it long the first the first shitty dip i hit on the highway or wherever it'll probably just scatter so hopefully nobody's behind me when that happens um, but yeah, most of the sanding and shit is all gonna is all gonna still kind of just just take place. I obviously need to get the headlights in. Um, this won't be the first day of filming, but I'll, I'll, I'll probably post this video tonight. So just let me know if I should do if I should just rock a GoPro and then edit all that, or time lapse it, or you know how you want to see me do it. I need to. Uh, I need to take this fuel line. Um, right now, I kind of got I kind of got that fuel line right there, and it's a what it is 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 like a short line, and it goes down to the factory hard line, and then it's just hosed clamp on. You know, it's something like this. Um, it's something like that, and then it'll have like an end like this on it, and then it'll have. You know something like this and then this would go to the fuel rail this goes down back underneath the firewall connects to a factory hard feed line and then right now there's no return line uh, there won't be a return line however um, there doesn't need to be but you need to use a uh, 
you need to use one of these. It's a uh, it's a Corvette fuel filter. I think it's a C6 or maybe a C5 fuel filter. Um, you know, basically that'll get mounted, you know, somewhere on the on somewhere on the frame rail. Uh, and then what you do is is you buy I think that's the feed line. Here's the second one. And there's the third one. Okay. Okay. Um, so these are actually different. Um, I think the 50 is 5 16 and I think the 60 is 3 8 Don't quote me on that. Okay, see I had that backwards. The 50 is a 3 8 and these are Russell fittings, so you know they're all gonna be the standard numbers. Here's the numbers. Um for if you want to, you know, kind of make your own fuel line cheap. And trust me, the uh I think Siki and Juku, all the big big names, they basically sell this same kit. I think the whole kit is uh don't quote me, but I think it's $160. And basically the only thing that they do for you is they install these. And these are all snap fitting, so they just snap right over top of these these little uh um you know, these little nipples or whatever you want to call them. And uh you know, they just snap on there. This thing snaps actually just down inside of the feed side of the of the um fuel filter. Uh, and then it kind of snaps in with its own little nipple there. Um, don't know why I, can't, I don't know why I can't say nipple. Maybe it's just awkward. I don't know. Um, so anyway, yeah, this kit uh, basically it'll be this, these three, these three fittings, the fuel filter, and then the fuel line is $160. Um, I've pieced my own together. I bought this fuel line from on Amazon Prime of course um, it's 25 feet I think theirs comes with 20 I, I could be wrong you're gonna have to look it look it up but basically I ended up saving myself about 40 bucks um, 40 and some change because maybe more I, I don't know I'm not I'm, I'm not on here because I, I'm, I'm wanting to do math I'm on here because I'm wanting to, to, to work on the car so anyway I think this was 40 this this fitting by itself I think was 16 bucks. Um actually let's see. No coffee. Um let's see. Okay, so all together it was eighty-four dollars. All together. It was eighty-four bucks. Uh, not gonna focus. Anyway, this was uh seventy, I think. Uh five, five fifty, and four bucks. So these were all cheap. And then I got this for seventy dollars. And then the line itself was another forty dollars. So I think all all out the door, I think I saved myself 40 bucks. And this line is a little bit better than the line that the one from Siki or Njuku or whatever comes from. Um, so yeah, the kit it the kit would be a convenient way to order it, which trust me, I'm all about convenience. That's why I ordered pretty much all new parts for this thing, just because I didn't want to have to source them later. And that's why I did shoot two months of unboxing videos straight like the UPS guy got to where he basically we were on a first name basis so and we still basically are I mean we order so much stuff from Amazon it's like you know every day it seems like something's getting dropped off at least three times a week you know they're here all the time <clears throat> so yeah so I'm gonna get cracking on this thing um, I'm gonna start with the uh, the fuel line and kind of just start getting it getting it figured out and kind of let it leak out on the floor what it what it's going to leak out also need to finish the wiring i got a switch because uh because right now i got 
you know, that kind of just ran to a ground and then ran hot whenever I choose to run it hot. And I need to, I'm going to actually plug the harness in and then tap into the harness and hopefully I can use the factory relay. That'd be, that'd be the, that'd be, um, you know, that'd be the way to go about doing that. But, um, so yeah, hopefully I get some, get some shit done. Yeah, so the fuel system I need to I needed to run up to um, Napa to um, to buy some AN fittings. I thought that I had all the AN fittings that I was going to need, and I didn't. So I um, had to order some some I don't know what they call the one end. It's a six AN, but the other end kind of uh, I'll show I'll show you uh, here in just a second, but. Uh, so yeah, I needed to order some of those. That way, I could um, could uh, could put the fittings onto the filter. Um, can't just really put put a hose on there with hose clamps. Um, the clamps aren't made to hold, apparently. And this is from this is from Napa. But the clamps aren't made to hold more than um, uh, like 40 pounds. And um, there's more pressure than that coming from the Walbro fuel pump. So rather than have issues going down the road with that, with the hose blowing off from pressure or, or anything else, just use uh, use the six AN fittings. I've already gone this far and, and, and bought um, you know 95% of them, so I just needed three more. Should have should have had should have had. I mean, I should have known that. I was going to need those, but I didn't. I thought I had all the ones that I needed. So yeah, just went up and got them ordered, and um, apparently those won't be in until Thursday. Uh, today is Tuesday, so a couple days they'll be in. And uh, got to kind of mocking stuff up, and I hope that I have enough. Um, I hope that I have enough fuel line to get, uh, you know, from the back to the engine from the, where, the, uh, where the filter's at to the engine. Uh, I'm thinking that I should, but I guess we'll see. Um, so yeah, that's all for now. Pretty, pretty, pretty cake day. Um, I'm gonna get the rest of the stuff kind of mocked up, and then I will, uh, I'll probably um, tie up some of the, some of the wiring that's probably what I'm going to do for the rest of this afternoon. Um, you know, then I got to go do some dumb shit. Like, not dumb, but, you know, get a haircut. Normal shit. Okay, so of course, in the, in hindsight, when I had the subframe out, um, shit, that would have been the time if I would have known that the, the fuel system that I had had set up, um, had had, anyway, the, the fuel system that I originally thought was going to work, uh, um, you know, would have utilized these factory hard lines, um, which I've kind of started to, to kind of chop and, and cut out. You can see there, right, those are the two, those are the feed and the return lines. There's actually two there. Uh, and then this is the brake line, and this is like a vent line. I haven't decided if I'm just going to let that, how I'm going to use that yet. But really, this, you know, shit, these lines, they fold up in through here, and then they kind of go around, go up behind this frame rail, and they kind of merge right there. Back here, back here. That's when they go and they hook to the, to the soft line. Okay, it's a better angle. So I spent all that time painting all this, making it pretty, and then my dad blew fucking red over over spray all over it. So that sucks, but it's all good. So yeah, then it goes the soft lines. To the to the fuel tank and I wish I would have known while I had this while I had the subframe out I wish I would have um, kind of known um, I don't know if most of you have ever seen 
all the work that was done underneath here. There's your BCs. And, uh, these are just some kind of aftermarket, um, you know, uh, adjustable upper and upper control arm. That's the stock lower. Uh, you know, just new bushings all the way around. There's some, there's the front. Um, there's like a another one that goes in there. I think I'm still missing one. Maybe in the front, the uh, traction control. Um, I had to have my drive shaft custom made um, because the T56 Super Magnum is not a regular T56. If it'll, it's not gonna. I guess it's not gonna focus. Yeah, there we go. That's kind of how that's mounted underneath of there. Um, that's a sicky transmission mount. That had to be mildly modified modified to fit with the super mag. Um, nothing major. Just had to uh, just had to. Um, I think we actually drilled and. Um, made new holes on the chassis itself so yeah that's kind of that uh, you know obviously the exhaust comes up in through here so yeah it cleans up pretty nice hopefully I'll get up underneath the here and clean all this but yeah so right now these fuel lines are uh, are really kind of screwing me over um, not sure how I'm gonna yank them things out of there without in my brake line uh, but really kind of kicking myself for not doing it when I had the subframe out but live and learn I guess um, yeah all right so <clears throat> got the uh, got the hard lines out um, was kind of a pain in the butt had to cut one side these are the sides that I cut um, with uh, you know just a good set of snips obviously I didn't go in there with a with a wheat with a whiz wheel or nothing but these are pretty much the best snips out there uh, you know shout out to to Nipix because these things are are badass um, and a good set of snips goes a long way. I don't know. That, that, those might be my favorite uh, favorite tools in the toolbox. Um, so yeah, cut them. Pulled those out. Like I said, I still have the vent line, um, the return line, and the feed line are down there. So what I'm going to try to do is take these brackets, you know, that kind of, you know, these mount up, up against the frame, and then it's kind of pinned to the bottom on this side. And then you've got a hard line. goes here. Um, the little brake line goes in these smaller things, and then shoot, I already threw it away. But I'll grab another one. Uh, that's kind of how it looks uh, regularly. You know, then you got two spots here for the two hard fuel lines. And what I did was cut this middle one out because I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to use, uh, um, you know, this this braided line down here. But this is the same size fuel line, so I kind of need to need to try and just see if I can get if that's going to work or not. You can kind of see when you when I cut it though. You know, all that's still kind of kind of boogered up there. So I'm going to take the uh, I guess this is a, called a die grinder. Take the die grinder and uh, you know, put it in the vise and go at it. I'm going to try and do this one handed. Um, this thing isn't really a big handful. So uh, it should, should be alright.
did get the uh let's see where's my light at anyway i think you can see it um the fuel line comes up into the back of the fuel rail it's right there goes down um, i applied some heat shielding to there um and i think i applied probably about two feet maybe something like that Let's see if I can see underneath here. <sighs> yeah. And it comes down. Attached it right there to the uh, to the body of the car, so it's you know pretty pretty secure there. Um, and the plan is is to. Secure it again right here and just run it straight back, you know, kind of follow the frame um, back with it. I need to secure it right here just for this bend. Um, with it being so close to the exhaust, I really kind of want it to stay tucked up against the body and as far away from, from any of that stuff as I can. Um, so. Um, so yeah, that's the plan for today. Um, gotta wait for some, some fittings, but I do plan on getting it all the way mocked up. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys have actually seen. Uh, you know, there's the motor mounts and then the headers are all, uh, you know, nicely wrapped. Uh, oil pan. Um, let's see. Oh. The radiator and fan shroud and fans uh, two big fans pretty nice little setup pretty hooked up there um, so other side pretty much looks the same minus uh, you know you got your let's see You got your oil lines that go up to that remote, um, that remote oil filter. The power steering is all fucking buggered up. I should have re just replaced that whole rack, but I didn't. And then that's the high pressure end coming off the power steering. Kind of goes up. Dipstick. I need to get it attached to the block. It looks like I missed a bolt there. Um, and I started kind of messing with the wiring yesterday, but didn't really get that far. So that's kind of the plan for today. And get uh, get cracking on it. <laughs>